This is Let's Talk with Liz, and I'm Liz. Hi, my YouTubers. Welcome back to my channel. This is Let's Talk with Liz, and of course, I'm Liz. Now, if you're new to this channel, don't forget to like and subscribe. All right, let's get into it. Today, we are talking about EBT, Medicaid, housing for the elderly. Yes. Um, I really, really want to talk about this because, uh, if any one of you have elderly, you know, parents, grandparents, um, you know, family members that are, you know, don't have a retirement plan, I'll put it that way, um, really barely making it, they're living off of, you know, um, their SSI or disability. And, you know, one thing I knew about my grandparents, my grandmother, um, they, they're going to pay their bills point blank period. <laughs> uh, they do not play around when it comes to their bills. They're going to make sure that their bills are paid and they are paid on time. And I'm sure a lot of you can relate and agree. Um, but what I want to talk about first is let's, let's talk about, um, housing for the elderly. <sighs> This really kind of like gets to me because, uh, you know, there is a lot of housing. It seems to be available for a lot of young people and not enough for our elderly people, um, with low incomes. Uh, you know, <laughs> It really, really touches me really a lot because, you know, I've, I know of elderly people that, you know, basically are living in shacks per se. Um, you know, they, they will, they will live in a place where, you know, they might have trouble with cracks in the ceilings or maybe they might have problems with the plumbing, but they will not say a word because, uh, the rent is cheap. And they can't really afford to go anywhere else because there really isn't uh, that much available for our elderly people. Um, and a lot of them, they are very independent. They don't want to go into a home. They, they're very prideful people. They don't want to move in with their children. And so you have a problem with a lot of elderly people, you know, having maintenance issues, but they will not move because, of course, they can't afford to second they don't want to make any trouble to get put out and i feel that they should there should be um apartments more apartment uh complexes available for our elderly citizens um, where they could uh, really afford it. And I really believe that they should uh, be someplace where their rent really does not keep increasing. I know personally, because I've dealt in the real estate uh, industry, where I've seen people on fixed incomes and uh, landlords have went up on their rent twice in, in a year. And these people basically, elderly people basically fix their income around their rent, light, water, gas. And a lot of them barely, I'm going to the second thing that I really want to really emphasize too, they barely have enough to pay for medical expenses. And some of them may have their medicine cut in half, you know, to where they can only get uh, so much to kind of ration it out. And some uh, go without certain medication for a period of time. And it's so unfair. It's so unfair the way the elderly are being treated here in the U.S., I don't think enough is being done for our elderly citizens. And of course, people say, well, you know, well, where are their children? And, you know, some people have children and some people do not. Um, but I feel going to my third, third thing is that, you know, a lot of these young people, they get, uh, EBT, which is called food stamps and it's nothing wrong with it. I have nothing against young people, uh, being on food stamps and living in, in, in public housing, you know, um, they get free medical, they get all of these things. But then when the elderly people go to apply for these things because of their check that they get, which some of them check may only be what seven, eight hundred dollars a month 
month. And a lot of that, because they have medical issues, they're paying, paying their, their, and, and high rent or mortgage payments. They're paying those plus, you know, the light water gas, and then they're paying the offset costs for medical, their medical care. And by the time they scrape up enough to get some food, it's really barely enough. And they go and apply for the, these, you know, the assistance uh, with the Department of Human Resources, uh, defects. And once they go there, you know, they're given $13, $15. And I'm talking, um, because, you know, this, this happened to, um, relatives of mine, you know, uh, it's very sad. And then you have these young ladies, you know, I'm not judging anybody. I was a single mother. Um, but you have these young ladies that have a lot of these babies and they are racking up on on food stamps. They're getting, you know, six, seven, eight hundred dollars a month. And the elderly people who don't even, you know, they have worked all of their lives. Here it is. They're only getting like fifteen dollars, thirty five dollars. And you're like, this is so unfair. You know, those young ladies, they're getting the, the free medical and, you know, for them, for their children. And like I said, it's nothing wrong with that. But help the elderly people, you know, help them. They really, really need. I mean, two hundred dollars would go a long way. A hundred dollars would go a long way with the elderly to help them out, you know, to get their groceries and, and what have you. Even when it comes down to the medical, uh, I can't say enough about the medical situation because as we all know, big farmer, you know, everybody has their hands in that, you know, they have their hands in the, in, in the money, you know, the doctors write the prescriptions and, you know, pharmaceuticals make those prescriptions that's being prescribed. And and then all of them are making money off of the elderly people. They're making a lot of money. So if you're you're making all of this money, why not help the elderly citizens here in the U.S.? You know, everybody have their hands out. You know, the doctors, you know, pharmaceutical tell them, hey, we got this right here. They pass these drug laws and, you know, they prescribe these elderly people so many prescriptions. It's like... (laughs) You see them come in with bags, big containers with a bunch of medicine and a lot of the medicine. Yes, Medicare pays it, but also they have to come up with that extra money that Medicare does not pay. So who's making the money? Who's who is it affect? It's not affecting the doctors. It's not affecting the pharmaceutical company. It's affecting the elderly citizens and even a lot of other people. Um, that has to have this medicine. And, and, you know, it's just really ridiculous. These are the areas that I feel that a lot of our elderly people need to um, as they say, get, catch a break, you know, and I know during the COVID time, you know, a lot of things, um, have been given. And I really believe that a lot of our elderly people should be given just a little bit more, at least, you know, um, because a lot of them have worked all their lives. A lot of them have served our country. A lot of them have retired and they have done their due diligence. So why can't we do our I'll do diligence and take care of our elderly. This is where a lot of our wisdom comes from. We can learn so much from them. And a lot of times I've seen our elderly just, you know, like I said, they, they get into these houses or apartments uh, that, you know, may have been in the family for a long time and they may need some maintenance work, but a lot of them will not say anything. They just, you know, go along with whatever is going on because they don't want to, for one, they're prideful. They don't like to ask for help. And a lot of them, you know, are used to making it. They're very, very strong people, you know? So, um, if anyone know of any other agencies or any, you know, thing that could really, you know, be, be a benefit for our elderly people, I would like for you to put it in the comment section. I am so, 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 so grateful um, for you uh, doing that. I appreciate it so much. And, um, you know, just to be able to pass that information along is like a gazillion dollars. And I thank you so much. 
much, um, you know, for putting that information down in the comment section. And I just want to thank you for joining me today. Uh, don't forget to share because we all need one another. Uh, comment and remember to love you.